Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and we are going to start with this clip. This is uh, Perry Ann Boring from the Digital Chamber of Commerce. Listen to this. It feels like this anti-AML uh, bill that is being helmed really by Elizabeth Warren is picking up steam. What is the chamber hearing about this? What do you think? Well, first we need to call it what it is. Senator Elizabeth Warren's anti-money laundering bill would effectively ban cryptocurrencies in the United States. This would be detrimental to our national security. Open source money, blockchain-based technology are advanced technologies. It is critical for our national security that we are at the forefront of leading in advanced technologies. And by banning them, which is what this bill does. It puts our head in, a, in the sand. It lets our adversaries and the rest of the world lead in this space. This is a very dangerous conversation that Senator Elizabeth Warren is pushing. And there's a lot to unpack in those clips that you talked about. Why is it that the banks are pushing this? Why is it that there weren't any technology experts weighing in? These are really big questions that the U.S. Senate must consider before moving forward. Frankly, we're heading into an election year. There's clearly a lot that Congress is dealing with on the funding side of the equation. Do you sense that this is still a priority? What are you hearing in terms of realistic timeline of this legislation actually moving forward? So I think the fact that Patrick McHenry has announced that he's leaving, it increases the priority. Um, Chairman Patrick McHenry has really taken digital assets as one of his legacy issues that he's taking on as he retires from U.S. Congress. So he has a lot riding on this bill and moving it forward and it passing, and he has you know even more incentive to do so now. Is there someone the chamber would like to see replace him on the Financial Services Committee as chair? Uh, there's a number of members of the House Financial Services Committee that are um, that have been champions of this space. Uh, in terms of a new House Financial Services chairman, we want somebody that has taken the time to understand how the technology works. Uh, we don't want someone like Jamie Dimon who is proposing things that are technically impossible to implement. Or Elizabeth Warren, her bill doesn't work with the technology itself. So whoever is going to serve in that role, whether it's the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee on the Senate Banking Committee or serving as you know the next Treasury Secretary, you need someone who understands how this technology works because this technology is shaping the future of global finance. And if they don't understand it at a technical level, how can they lead the nation to success? Well, and of course, there's a question of whether the next chair is even going to be a Republican, depending on what control uh, of the House looks like. How much do you think is riding politically for the crypto industry in, in 2024? How crucial a year is it going to be? It's a big year because policy is changing in real time. There's over 40 more million Americans that own cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin today. And if all of those people got out and vote and made sure that we had people in office that understand this technology and want to make sure the U.S. is going to lead in this technology, we will lead the country in a much more brighter spot. I think that she's 100 percent right. Check this out. I'm, I'm having fun playing with this Grok thing. I asked it what would what it what would what could the XRP price be if the Ripple won at the Supreme Court level? And here's what they say. Some analysts have speculated that the price of XRP could reach as high as ten or even a hundred dollars in the event of a Supreme Court victory. That would be something I would take a hundred dollars. That would be lovely. Supreme Court victory. Um, I like playing with this AI AI stuff. It's a lot of fun. Okay, here's this is another good, great clip uh, of John Deaton with Raul Paul yesterday. Your ETH will they ever decouple from this sort of Bitcoin cycle that we've witnessed? No, because the Bitcoin cycle is the macro cycle. Don't forget. All assets are going up and down in this four-year cycle, as is the economy, as are interest rates. It's all due to 2008 and resetting interest rates back to zero, all the government, major governments around the world. They then issued their debt in this three to five-year sector, so let's call it four years on average, and this debt refinancing cycle is the cycle that drives Bitcoin, all crypto, 
all assets. It's also the presidential cycle. They're all the same thing right now, right? This is this super correlated world. Yeah. So within it, the first part, what I call macro spring, which is what we've been in, the early part of a bull market, when inflation is starting to fall, growth is still falling, but starting to try and stabilize somewhere. Normally, that's when Bitcoin outperforms. It's like in the beginning of a bond market rally, it's treasuries that outperform. Then as people get confidence and more liquidity comes in the system, they start taking more risk and it goes further out the risk curve. And that's when the alts start performing. So we're transitioning currently from macro crypto spring to macro crypto summer. So that's what's known as alt season. And okay. it's, it starts it starts with the higher quality tokens first. And then at the end of it, in 2025, it's kind of everything goes up ridiculously. Okay. I want to play one more clip. Uh, this is with the view on Laura Shen's show. Uh, it's about a minute, but I want to follow up on some of the... Okay. That's interesting. I, that guy's so smart. Now, here's Stuart Alderati talking about the U.S. problem. And, and in the U.S., I mean, you know, we have a problem with politics and power being elevated over sound policy. And yes, you, you, you know, you go to the Hill, you go to Congress, they want to see the use cases. And you're absolutely right, Emily. We can't ignore the question. I think we do have to explain and educate. Um, but three or four years ago, when I traveled the world and I talked to other regulators, and if you've had similar experiences, what I was sort of told either expressly or implicitly through body language is we're waiting to see where the U.S. is going to go with this. Now, when they had these conversations in 2023, the impatience has crossed the line. The U.S. has fallen behind, and countries like Singapore, Dubai, London, the EU, through Mika or yep. MICA, everywhere else, they understand that the technology is here, it's not going away, and we can't prohibit it, so we have to sort of rationally regulate it. So I do think the, the, the U.S., although it's a very important market, it's a market we can't ignore, um, I don't, the, the rest of the world has kind of moved on in the conversation. All right. Interesting stuff. Now, this is a guy, um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, but it, it, it's, a, it's a guy that was at uh, Ripple Swell, and, he, and they, he's a partner of Ripple. Watch this. The other, in that quest of relevant networks outside of Africa, uh, the other one was Ripple. And that's how the, our journey with Ripple started, because we believe around the world, obviously, once you've done the card rails, and you do some specific networks like China that we believe the payment network that will be relevant there will be specific to China and we've done some work there. We think there will also be some relevant network that will be born out of the internet, you know, the whole crypto movement. And for us, it was important that we pick carefully, not what is shiny necessarily or hype today, but what will be there in 10 years, what, who is putting in the work to be relevant, not just today, but for the next 100 years. And yeah. I think, in our opinion, Ripple, Ripple is in that category. That's why uh, we, we partner we, with you. Um, Let me translate. Not shiny today, like Bitcoin. The name itself. Um, so switching gears just slightly, you know, yesterday we made an announcement, sort of uh, extending, expanding the relationship between Ana Freak and, and Ripple specifically. Um, we are now enabling senders from around the world, um, from the Middle East people, uh, a sender uh, based uh, here in the Middle East, uh, UK, um, also Australia. in Australia. And they're going to take advantage of, of, of crypto enabled cross border payments uh, sending into um, on Afrique's network, which is fantastic. We're excited about uh, the potential of that. All righty. And then I wanted, this is the last one I wanted to show you. This, this is a guy from Cantor Fitzgerald. Listen to what he says about Joseph Lubin. These Wall Street guys know because Joseph Lubin's been working with JP Morgan from the beginning. And this is this kind of, th this video right here symbolizes everything we've been saying. Well, I think Bitcoin is that. Like Let me see if I can get this sound higher. That's not my sound. That's theirs. See if I can get it up just a little bit. Watch this. I'm going to be real quiet. Well, I think Bitcoin is that. Like, Bitcoin is uncontrolled, but there's no one you can call. See, Tether, if you have Tether, right, and, the, and Justice Department calls Tether, they freeze it. 
because there's someone to call. There's no one to call on Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a weird thing, but it's only Bitcoin is a weird thing. You know, well, actually, he's wrong. There is someone you can call on Bitcoin. You call Homeland Security. We even have the person's name. And then she can call one or one or all of the four Satoshis. And, and those four Satoshis could access the Bitcoin, the Satoshi wallet, and totally affect the price. So he's wrong about that. He's right about this. Theory being called Joe Lugan. Let me back that up just a little bit. Weird thing, but it's only Bitcoin is a weird thing. You know, in, in theory being called Joe Lugan. Like you can call a guy and say, hey, Joe. <laughs> How are See, you really brought it to that? They thing. all know. Ethereum, you can call Joe Lubin. How about them apples, folks? Um, now, in the DAIXRP.com group, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about evil. We're going to talk about all the, the evil plan <clears throat> that, that they're presenting as with all this soft marketing language for you and me, these, these globalists. We're going to talk about that. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family. Here comes the evil plan. Thanks for listening.